Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the coolest of them all? Oh, I was kind of expecting to see a reflection of myself, but I, guess, I don't know, I guess these Antec coolers are pretty cool. So stay tuned, because we have something pretty cool planned. I know I'm saying cool a lot, but just chill about that. Oh. <laughs> With up to 4 terabytes of massive storage capacity combined with SSD-like performance, Seagate's solid-state hybrid drives are the fastest way to have it all. The Antec coolers 650, 950, and 1250, all of which I have here today, have been out for quite some time. They aren't the usual cookie-cutter, closed-loop design AIO coolers we've seen over and over, though. What Antec brings to the table is a built-in pump on the fan hub. This was done so they could fit a larger pump on that hub instead of being restricted by the space left over after they build a CPU water block, like most other designs. Speaking of the water block, there's an RGB LED built into the block, which can change colors based on the temperature of the 650. 50 model, and with the 950 and 1250, the LED can be customized to any color as well. So what's the difference between the three various models? Basically, radiator sizing and the number of included fans. The 650 comes with a standard 25mm thick rad with the built-in fan and a fancy air duct for channeling exhaust airflow. The 950 comes with a much thicker radiator with also one built-in fan. These are both 120 mil rads, by the way. And the 1250 comes with a dual rad with two fans pre-installed, also with the USB header connection that is also on the 650 that I missed before. However, Jack wants to point out that the one thing he likes about the Antec coolers is also the one thing he dislikes. The pre-installed fan pump combo. It's a neat design because there's no fussing with installing the fan in the wrong orientation or fumbling around with it, holding the rad and the fan together, trying to get the screw into place. Um, this is a real time saver, but the downside is that it cannot be replaced. If the fan fails, you have to send the whole thing back in. Same goes for the pump. So this is all fine and dandy, but it's a bit boring. So let's spice things up, shall we? Yes, just like that. Ah, the PC here was put together by Jack, you can tell, because it's held together by zip ties. You see this graphics card in here? It's an EVGA GTX 970. Jack took off the stock ACX cooler and ghetto rigged the Cooler 650 onto it with the help of NCIX Anthony. Now, before we go any further, we got to do the, uh, you know, the warning. Only try this at your own risk. We do not take any responsibility for anything that happens to your GPU or your entire PC. For that matter, from this point forward, this will void any warranties you have. NCIX Anthony actually did this for his personal HTPC rig, not because he was cheap and couldn't afford a real water cooling loop. Did he ask for that to be put in there? He put that in there but because he, something, whatever reason, he's, something, he wanted to fully water cool his system for under 75 bucks or something like that, which is basically cheap, right? Okay, cool. Okay, so with that out of the way, how does one fashion a CPU AIO cooler onto a GPU? You will need at least eight zip ties, diamond-shaped wire cutters, a screwdriver, and a buddy willing to give you a helping hand. So first what you want to do is remove the stock's GPU cooler. Do so with the utmost of care. Perhaps take, take pictures along the way to document what goes where and how. Every brand is a little bit different, so the removal process can vary. But in our experience with G4 700 and 900 series cards, the removal of the cooler usually involves removing four screws around the outside of the GPU. Something to bear in mind is that some brands actually allow you to take the cooler off without voiding your warranty. So uh, if you're planning to do something like this, maybe look for one of those brands. Next, get some isopropyl alcohol and clean the GPU surface in preparation for the CPU cooler. These Antec coolers come with thermal grease pre-applied, but if yours doesn't, or if you're reusing a cooler from before, then you'll need to use a non-conductive thermal paste. With the next step, things get a little bit interesting. First, grab two zip ties and attach one to the other so that you have a bigger zip tie. Or you could just use a zip tie that's big enough to go all the way around, whichever floats your boat. Next, wrap your zip tie bracket around the CPU block and tighten it so it'll stay on, but not too tight. Why? Because the next step involves threading four more zip ties in between that bracket and the block. This part you'll need your buddy for, to hold the block while you do things. Once all four are threaded through the bracket, align the four ties with the screw holes on the GPU, 
Once aligned, you can tighten the bracket thread, the four zip ties through, the screw that holds on the GPU. Once that's done, you'll want to lock the zip ties in place. So grab your remaining four zip ties and lock the threading into place. You'll want to make sure the block is making good contact with the GPU chip. Even pressure is more important than raw tightness. At this point, we would recommend installing the GPU and cooler into the PC and running a temp monitor to make sure the idle temps aren't crazy high. If they are, then you might need to tighten the threading on the back of the card just a bit to once again make sure that there is good contact. If you were careful the first time around, you should be golden. Make sure your idle temps are in the kind of 30 degree-ish range or less. Make sure to tighten anything that might look loose and then take your side cutters and cut the excess off. Just in case, oh yeah, but not too much. Just in case you need to make improvements in the future or adjustments in the future. All right, so benchmark results time. We ran Furmark for roughly 30 minutes. First up, the stock cooler. Idle temps were around 29 degrees Celsius with load temps jumping up to 64 degrees Celsius. Next, we ran the ghetto cooled solution with a fan plugged into a system fan header on the motherboard. This yielded idle temps of 29 degrees with load temps of 49 degrees. For the last set of temperature results, we suggested that uh, Jack tried connecting the fan directly to a Molex adapter. Right away, the fan was a lot louder, but idle temps were 28 degrees with low temps hitting 43 degrees. So conclusion time. Well, we don't necessarily recommend rigging your own AIO cooler onto your GPU. It was nice to see it work nicely in comparison to the stock cooler. The setup was easier to take care of versus a custom water-cooled solution. And also the price of the cooler used is like half the price of a standard custom block. This ghetto mod is definitely meant for the frugal and most daring of enthusiasts out there. And a shout out to the guys at overclock.net who discovered the technique and dubbed it the red mod or the green mod, depending on your card, of course. There are a couple of benefits as well that the uh, whoever wrote this one didn't actually catch. But the first one is that using an AIO cooler like this not only lowers the temperature of your GPU, but also allows you to exhaust that heat directly out of your system so that it's not just kicking around additional heat within the system. And then the second one is one that I've forgotten now. So leave a comment down below, guys. Have you tried to do something similar before? How did it turn out for you? As always, guys, like, oh yes, oh, critical, right, I remember now. Please take care of the VRM cooling and memory chip cooling on your card. This only cools the GPU, so make sure that you've got a fan blowing directly at your card. Even something like an Antec Spot Cool would be an excellent choice so that you can, you can take care of those temperatures. And use, you can use something like an infrared thermometer in order to make sure that they're actually all running okay. You want those to stay below that sort of 70, 80 degree range. That's their absolute, absolute max. Right, so uh, if you guys have tried anything like this, let us know how it turned out. As always, like and share the video, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos sort of like this from NCIX.